Back in December 2012, a lot of people were freaking out over the idea that the world might end in some catastrophic event. And it was all thanks to the famous Maya calendar. This ancient way of tracking time had been the subject of endless speculation. But one of its biggest mysteries was definitely an 819-day count found in some versions of the calendar. No one could explain why it was there or how it worked, until recently, when a group of researchers from Cambridge might have finally cracked the code. First things first, how does the Maya calendar work? So the system the Maya civilization used to track days was based on something we now call the calendar round. Think of it like three interlocking gears. These are three cycles working together. The first is a 365-day solar year, known as Hab. The second is a cycle of 20 names. And the third is a cycle of 13 numbers, which forms a 260-day sacred calendar, called Solkin. Just like we'd say something like December 25th, 2025, they named their days based on how these three cycles lined up. For example, here we have the day 3 Manic and the 14th of the month Hop. It takes 52 years for the three cycles to align in the same way again. After that, the days start repeating. But this is where things start to get more complicated and mysterious. On some Mayan monuments, we have also found enigmatic inscriptions pointing to the existence of another cycle, the 819-day count. There are about 20 examples of these inscriptions, mostly found in places like Palenque and Yaxchilan in Mexico. So it didn't seem random at all, and this calendar must have been hiding a big secret. Early research showed that the 819-day cycle was represented by one of four colors and the cardinal directions associated with them. Black was tied to the west, red to the east, white to the north, and yellow to the south. Researchers also discovered that this period of time could be broken down into three smaller cycles. One of nine days, one of seven days, and one of 13 days. Multiply them together, and you'd get 819 days. Pretty cool, but why did they do that? This color scheme and the three cycles seemed like a basic level of interpretation, and experts were pretty sure its real purpose was still hidden from us. Another thing researchers noticed is that this strange count of days was mostly shown using a Y glyph followed by a number. But in some cases, they also added a glyph representing Kawil. This was a powerful Maya deity often associated with creation and lightning. He was usually symbolized by a torch coming out of his forehead, representing the spark of life. But in the 90s, a study suggested that when Kawil's inscription showed smoke and fire coming from his forehead, it could actually represent the planets Jupiter or Saturn, or maybe even both. Wait, that means that the 819 days count could be linked to both planets in some way. From there, research focused on figuring out what that link might be. The first conclusion is that this calendar might have helped the Maya track the movements of those planets in some way. Then they started noticing something interesting. These cycles could be specifically tied to the synodic periods of Jupiter and Saturn. By synodic periods, we mean the time it takes for a celestial body, like a planet, to return to the same or nearly the same position as seen from Earth. While this possibility was pretty exciting, something didn't quite add up. Each planet moves very differently, and trying to fit multiple planets into an 819-day span just didn't seem to work. In other words, this four-part color-coded calendar system was simply too short to align perfectly with the synodic periods of the visible planets. So it looks like we're back to square one. This mystery had people scratching their heads for ages, until 2023 when specialists realized they might have been looking at it all wrong. Researchers actually needed to shift their perspective. Instead of seeing this system as 819 days, 
they needed to consider the number as representing timelines. And this period of time could be just a small part of a much, much bigger calendar. You see, as we said earlier, this cycle seemed to track the period when a planet became visible to people on Earth. To prove that these 819 cycles were timelines, not actual days, researchers needed a planet that could serve as a starting point to back up their theory. In this case, it was Mercury. And there's a pretty simple reason for that. Mercury's synodic period is 117 days, which fits perfectly into the calendar count. I mean, if you take 1819 and divide by 117, you get the number 7. So, Mercury is the only visible planet whose synodic cycle fits neatly into this period as whole numbers. Perfect. Now they had a solid starting point. From there, they needed to expand the calendar by increasing its length to 20 periods of 819 days. Suddenly, a pattern emerges. And just like that, all the synodic cycles of the planets fit perfectly into the system. For example, Saturn's synodic period from 378 days lines up perfectly after six 819-day cycles. Venus aligns every five cycles, Jupiter every 19 cycles, and Mars, which takes the longest, needs 20 cycles. In other words, it takes about 45 years for Mars to align with the synodic periods of all visible planets. So, this is how researchers determined that the ancient civilization wasn't referring to days, but rather to timelines. The Maya astronomers came up with this count as part of a larger calendar system of 20 periods. But then a question comes up. Why was studying the synodic period so important to the Maya? Well, we don't have super specific answers about this mysterious calendar yet. But what we can say for sure is that the Maya truly believed in the powerful influence of the cosmos on daily life. So maybe they wanted to analyze how the movements of all the visible planets lined up with their other calendars. Of course, this system is just one part of the Maya's amazing and advanced understanding of astrology. And it wasn't just about using astrological cycles for planting and harvesting. They also had crazy specific knowledge, like how to predict solar eclipses. Archaeologists believe the Maya connection to the stars is reflected in the ruins of their world. Take the famous pyramid in the ancient city of Chichen Itza, located in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. If you look closely at the base of its staircase, you will see a snake's head carved in stone. But here's the coolest part. During the spring and fall equinoxes, when day and night are exactly the same length, the sun casts sharp triangular shadows on the staircase. It creates the illusion of a snake slithering down the steps. Another example of how they use their knowledge of astronomy in their temples is in Tikal, Guatemala. Built around year one of the Common Era, this pyramid is considered one of the Maya's earliest astronomical complexes. And its alignment and orientation allowed them to track and calculate solstices and equinoxes with incredible precision. The Maya were skilled sky watchers. Just like we have modern-day high-tech observatories with round domes, they had something similar. Meet El Caracol. The name means snail in Spanish and refers to the spiral staircase inside the tower. Built around 906 Common Era, it was the perfect place to observe all the changes in the sky and track the movements of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. Unlike us today, with our telescopes, satellites, and advanced tools, the Maya relied entirely on naked eye observation, and that makes their achievements even more incredible. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.